A lot of times when programming, it's handy to be able to give our own names to the values that we calculate. As maybe we want to remember them so that we can use them again later and not just use, well, in the case of the REPL, the names that it gives it. Or if we were writing a script, we don't have the little res1, res2 from the REPL, so we need to have names for things. And these can be done using some declarations. All declarations in Scala start off with a keyword for the declaration. There are two keywords that we can use. One is val, and the other one is var. And we'll talk some about what the difference between these two is. For now, we'll just look at the basic syntax of it. We start with the declaration keyword, then we give the name that we want to use. And you'll note here after I hit enter, this didn't say res whatever. It said, hey, now this is using the name A. In this case, it's using the name B. <clears throat> and we say an equal, and then what expression it's supposed to be. Now, when we do this, Scala is smart enough to figure out the types of things. So if I set something equal to high, it figures out that the type of that is a string, whereas these were, were ints. You can also be specific. We can tell it that we want something to be a particular type. So for example, x, I want to be a double, and I set it equal to 0. Now normally, if I set something equal to 0, I would get the int. By putting that type in there, we make it specific that we want this to be a double. On the other hand, let's go with y is an int equals 3.6. That's not going to be happy, because we've said this should be an int, but the thing that's on the right-hand side of of the equal sign is not an int and it can't be safely converted to an int because it would lose information. Okay, so keyword name equals value with the optional type in here as well. And this putting a colon followed by a type is going to be something that we will see very generally through Scala. Uh, that's how you specify types in the language. An interesting question might be what are the names that we're allowed to put here? So I put A, B, S, X, Y. Uh, those kind of look like mathy type names. They're single letters. But it turns out that when we're programming, we generally won't use single letters. We want names that have more meaning to us. And indeed, we have the flexibility to use names that include multiple char uh, characters in them. So I can declare a variable called the answer and set it equal to 42. Note that I started with a lowercase letter here. Scala doesn't force that. I can start with an uppercase letter, but by a style convention, we were going to make all of our variables, as these are called, uh, begin with lowercase letters, and then any subsequent words will use capital letters in their names. So what is that difference between val and var? It turns out that val is creating a value that, in some sense, we can't change. We, uh, when we set a equal to 5, a is always going to point to the object 5. And the object 5 can't change, so a will always be 5. However, when we declare a var, like b, we have the ability to assign it a different value. So I can change the value of b. If I try to do that same thing with a, I get an error. It says reassignment to val. We're not allowed to make assignments to val declarations. Another thing that's really handy with these variable declarations is related to tuples. So you might recall that we had, we introduced tuples like this, and then I said that we can pull out the first thing by doing dot underscore one, the second thing by doing dot underscore two, etc. Well, technically that works. It is not really the ideal way to get things out because underscore one and underscore two aren't very meaningful names. What I can do instead, so maybe this was an age, a word, and a price equals res 14. 
This is using a, an ability in Scala called pattern matching, and we'll see a lot more of Scala's pattern matching over time. We're kind of just going to barely scratch the surface of it here, and we're just dealing with it on tuples. But what this does is the thing that is on the right-hand side has to be a three tuple, otherwise we would get an error here. And then every name that I put in here is going to actually create a new variable. Uh, I haven't really said what our limits on the variable names are. Obviously they can have multiple letters in them. Um, Scala is fairly flexible. It allows the types of names that you get in other languages like Java, which are things that have letters and numbers and underscores in them. It has to start with either a letter or an underscore, and then it can be any combination of letters, numbers, or underscores afterwards. So that is a very is a valid name. I can use that name in Scala. I don't know if I'd want to, but but I can. I can use that name in Scala. So I can declare a val that way. We will typically avoid starting with underscores. I'm not allowed to start with numbers. That is not a valid name because it starts with a number. I could put a letter in front of it, and then it would be a, a happy name, but I cannot start with a number. Scala also allows some symbolic names. In fact, we've kind of seen that. We saw that technically plus is a method, and methods are just using names as well. Uh, and so there are rules that deal with, with symbolic names that at this point in time we're just going to avoid because we don't want to, to deal with symbolic names. You really probably shouldn't be using them at this point. Uh, symbols should be used for operators, and we don't have the ability to make operators at this point. So that gives you a general introduction to how we can declare variables using val and var keywords. One last thing to note, you'll no you will notice that almost all of mine were val declarations. I put one var in there just so I could demonstrate that we can do an assignment. As a rule of thumb in Scala, it is good style to use val everywhere you can and only resort to using a var if you can't figure out a way to use a val. It turns out that because vals can't be reassigned to, the logic of working with vals is a lot simpler than the logic of working with vars. If you mess something up in your program, it's a lot easier to find if everything's a val than if you have vars where all of a sudden things can be changing over time.